Hi, this is Kent from Man About Tools, and for the first time, we're going to irrigate our garden from this rainwater tank. It's been hot and dry for the last few weeks, and we haven't had any significant rain. So I'm gonna switch over from our irrigation well to this tank. So this is part four of my series on installing this uh, 1200 gallon rainwater tank. If you've been following along, you know the idea was that if our irrigation well ran dry, as it does quite often in the summer, then we can switch over to this rainwater tank, and that will allow us to expand our garden. Well, I think that day might be today. So we'll head down to the well, um, pop the lid, and we'll see how much water is left. The shallow well and pump house is over in the corner of the property here. Uh, I put in a three-quarter horsepower pump a couple of years ago, and that seems to be working out really well. I think we'll switch over and uh, let this recover. In this pump house, I have a three quarter horsepower shallow well jet pump and a pressure tank, a spin down a sediment filter, and two ball valves. To turn this off, I just turn off these two ball valves, and I'll go turn on the ball valve uh, for the rainwater tank. Right, now I'll bleed some pressure off of that system. That's the irrigation system depressurized. I can turn on the valve from the tank now, and we'll go in and turn the pump on. Okay, let's uh, turn on some valves slowly here and see what happens. Okay, so this valve goes, that's the, um, hose bib that was outside. I've got a check valve here, so water shouldn't be able to come backwards. And so if I open this one, there should be no water as well. Okay, so we've got it primed. One more try here. I got a few leaks here. Might have to fix those first. Looks like around these fittings that came from factory, so I'll have to investigate that. Looks like they're dripping a little bit. So after quite a bit of troubleshooting this afternoon, I couldn't figure out why the pump wasn't drawing water from the tank or holding pressure. And the section of pipe here I put in in part wood had two holes in it. And I didn't realize that. Some used pipe that I found in the back um, replaced this section. Now it's drawing water from the tank and it's holding pressure. All right. So I pulled the pump out of the shed because I have a leak right here at this fitting. Uh, this T fitting has a pipe that runs into the pressure tank. Now I've been using Teflon tape on all my fittings to make sure that they don't leak. But to get this fitting so it doesn't leak, I have to tighten it this far. And then this hose that runs to the pressure tank then basically twists and wrinkles, and I can't have that. So the problem is that this hose has these fittings that don't 
spin. So instead of using the Teflon tape, I'm going to take this apart and try it with some pipe thread compound to see if I can get this in the right position so it won't leak. Alright, so I'll take all the tape off of here that I had, because I don't, I'm not going to use that now. Okay, now, I'm going to put this where I think it's going to be the best spot, where it won't kind of wrinkle. So, if I get it right on that angle, then that'll probably, that'll probably work. This stuff is non-toxic and okay for potable water systems. All right, all right, so that should work like that. And then I can take this off of here. Hopefully I'll get it so that when I spin this on, this fitting ends up like that as well. I don't think I can go any further without causing it to bind again. So that might be, I might have to almost leave it slightly loose for this to work. We'll let that set up and uh, put it back in place. Try it with 10 psi first. We'll check all our fittings. A bit more pressure. I don't know quite yet. More pressure. That's about forty two pounds. Well, I think this one still has to be tightened a bit more. something you know all right we're going to pressurize the whole garden system I might have to adjust my pressure switch because I'm not getting quite to 50 here still having a small leak leak right there and a little bit of a leak right Well, 
I'll just keep an eye on it. I might have to replace this T fitting that's right here. There might be something wrong with it. I don't know. Still got a small drip there, even with the uh, pipe dope. Okay, final update with the pump. I did end up fixing this leak. I took this fitting off one more time and replaced it with some Teflon tape and it seems to be holding pressure now. So no leaks anywhere. System is holding pressure. I still have to adjust the pressure switch a little bit to get up to 50 PSI, but I'm happy with around the 45 or so that it reaches right now. And I'll go to the garden and turn the irrigation system on right now and uh, we'll see how it performs. Put this on manual. Okay, and then we'll go back in and see how the pump is doing. All right, I can hear it running. Ooh, dark in here. Let me put some light on. Looks like it's working fine. Okay, that's off. So in the hose bibs that we put in a few years ago, I think there's about five of them here in the garden. I have these small timers. This is a, a one outlet hose faucet timer. Now I went with the most popular brand on Amazon. There's always a good option. This is the one made by by orbit and i think i have six or seven of these and i really like them they have a large digital display super easy to set and i have them set on um, to turn on every 12 hours and to run for 10 minutes and i have them set all to do that at the same time so the pump will run continuously and stay cool so have the, the timer, uh, a short length of uh, flexible hose, and then I run it into this Y filter. I've got a sediment filter on the irrigation system, but this one's a bit finer to catch any of those smaller particles. Runs through that, and then we run through a pressure reducer down to 10 PSI. Um, here's another one here. This is slightly larger. It's also a 10 uh, PSI pressure reducer, but it allows a little bit more flow. And then this runs into a three quarter inch line that's underground, comes up in the flower beds. And then we have a drip line and these small emitters that can poke through the three quarter inch pipe. I like to drill a small hole, hole first, pop those in, and then the drip emitter goes onto that. This is some of the drip tape that we're using. I'm going to start to pressurize now. So this is a three-quarter inch line that we bury underground. Got a small tap here that we can turn this off if we need to. There's one of those fittings and uh, flexible drip tape attached to it. And I'll just rub this a little bit. And in this particular one, I think it's every eight inches, there's a small drip emitter right here. A little bit of air running through the line right now. We reuse these tapes. This one we've been using for three years now. Um, sometimes if it gets a kink in it, it'll break, but it's pretty durable. And it seems like the emitters work really well here. They don't seem to plug up, so we're really happy with this particular tape. This is the uh, drip tape we've been using. by uh, Aquatrax. This just gently slides on like that. Give it a spin and that's it. And then it can be adjusted so that the double lines are up. The end of the season, we just back that off, pull these out. I fold these up and I put them in the garage for the winter. 
and that is our irrigation system. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.